हे जगत्राता विश्व विधाता हे सुख शांति निकेतन हे Because here I think there is some time gap. Yeah. Prem ke sindho, deen ke bandho. Prem ke sindho, deen ke bandho. Dukha daridra vinashan hai. जगत्राता विश्व विधाता हे सुख शांति निकेतन हे प्राण सखा त्रिभुवन प्रतिपालक जीवन के अवलंबन है जीवन के लंबन है हे जगत्राता विश्व विधाता हे सुख शांति निकेतन हे I think we have to get used to this, uh, you know, Zoom way of of working. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Manoj Bhaiya has suggested to talk about the importance of prayer. To understand the importance, we need to understand. the factors required for any successful endeavor any successful activity people are busy doing the activities and people want to be successful in their activities and to have successful activity the first factor required is motivation prerana if motivation is not there activity will not be continued activity will not be pursued till the end therefore the first factor required is prerana motivation the second factor required is prayatna प्रयत्न मीन्स प्रकृष्ट यत्न प्रयत्न वेल डायरेक्टेड सफिशियंट एफर्ट इज कॉल्ड प्रयत्न इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गो टू ऋषिकेश वेन आई एम नाउ इन कोयम्बटूर देन आई शुड मेक एफर्ट विच इज इन राइट डायरेक्शन आई शुड गो टू नॉर्दन डायरेक्शन and i should travel for sufficient number of days or hours depending upon the mode of transport then only i can reach the destination so the second factor required is prayatna sufficient well directed effort if your effort is not sufficient success may not come your effort is sufficient but not well directed not in right direction then also success may not come and therefore we require sufficient well directed effort 
third thing required is pratiksha patience to wait for the outcome sometimes because of impatience we may spoil the pursuit it is something like somebody sows the seed and puts water also fertilizer also but just after two days he digs it up to find out whether the seed has sprouted or not it will not it takes time then again he does that after two days again he does that so because of impatience he loses the success in that endeavor in that effort therefore the third factor required is patience pratiksha and the fourth factor required is prarthana prayers because by prayatna effort we are taking care of all known factors involved in activity and getting desired outcome like if i am going out i wear chappal i may take umbrella so i may take care of the factors which are known to me but there can be some unknown factors involved in doing the action in the production of result there may be some hidden variables the best example of hidden variable is in 2019 many people might have planned so many investment so many trips so many programs nobody knew that there will be something called covid and because of which all plans were derailed up many at least many plans were derailed so that is called hidden factor hidden invariable unknown variable and to take care of this unknown variable we need to pray so that some invisible obstacles which are in the form of hidden variables will be taken care of therefore prayer is an act is an action for taking care of invisible obstacles in my pursuit any pursuit and regarding prayer there are so many misconceptions i would like to touch upon that topic one misconception about prayer is that prayer is a sign of weakness people say prayer is only weak people they do so one misconception is prayer is a sign of weakness second i will be clarifying all of them but let me first mention all of them second is that prayer is superstition is a blind belief prayer is coming out of blind belief superstition third misconception about prayer is prayer is a way of bribing ishvara you are bribing ishvara you are trying to bribe ishvara another misconception is by prayer we are trying to butter ishvara flatter ishvara to make him favorable or another another misconception is that prayer doesn't really work if at all it works it is by chance is a fluke only there is a placebo effect you might have heard in medical science they use the word placebo effect prayer prayer doesn't work and all these are misconception because of not knowing what prayers what prayer is one more misconception is that prayer makes a person lazy this is one more misconception so let us see how this concepts are 
based on wrong understanding. First of all is prayer is a sign of weakness. That is not true. Prayer is not sign of weakness. Prayer is pragmatism. Means prayer is a way of taking care of all factors involved in a pursuit. An intelligent person is the one who takes care of all the factors involved in the pursuit. Only gross people will see only minimum factors and they go ahead and they will fail in their attempt. Pragmatism is, pragmatism is in simple words practical. Pragmatism is you take care of all the factors and an intelligent person knows that there are some invisible factors which need to be taken care of and they can be taken care of by prayers because there is no other way of taking care of invisible factors. Therefore, prayer is not a sign of weakness, prayer is a sign of pragmatism. Another thing is a prayer is a superstition, it is not because it is based on Shastra Pramanam. Shastram also is a Pramanam. Just as my eyes are Pramanam, my ears are Pramanam, Shastram also is a Pramanam. And therefore, prayer is not a superstition. Just because you do not accept Shastram as a Pramanam, you cannot say that Prayer is based on superstition. And those who are very, very obsessed with the scientific proof and scientific support, to them also we can say that in several studies it is found that the people who pray when they are unwell, then they cope up better with their sickness. The treatment becomes more effective when people are prayerful. And therefore, prayer is not a superstition. Third misconception is that prayer is a bribe, prayer is bribing Ishvara. What a ridiculous thing. If Ishvara needs something from you, then you can bribe. What would expect, what Ishvara would expect from is everything is his only then we cannot bribe Ishvara. Even if you want, you cannot bribe Ishvara. Therefore, prayer is not bribing Ishvara. Or prayer is like flattering Ishvara, buttering Ishvara, icing, they call it. It is not. Because Ishvara doesn't require any praise from us. Who requires praise? A person who is feeling low, small about oneself, he requires praise. Ishvara doesn't feel small about himself. And therefore, Ishvara doesn't need any flattery from me. Therefore, prayer is not flattering Ishvara or bribing Ishvara or buttering Ishvara. And people say that prayer doesn't work. How do you say? Prayer has worked. It is the experience of so many people. And just because sometime it did not work does not mean it doesn't work. No medicine in the world works for 100% patients. Even vaccine they are going to prepare, which is a very big news, it is not going to work for 100%. It is going to work for 85, 90 percent. So, it is not that prayer works, prayer doesn't work because I, in my life I prayed and it did not work, therefore prayer doesn't work. Prayer definitely works, but the working of prayer is based on certain laws, which we may not be aware of and therefore sometimes our experience may be that prayers did not work. And another thing is that people say prayers make the people lazy. That is because of wrong understanding of prayer. 
prayer is not a replacement for action. It is not that either you pray or you act. It is not like that. Prayer is not a replacement of action. Prayer is complementary to action. It supports our action. It is not a replacement or a substitute of action. And therefore, we need to be very clear about what prayer is and what prayer is not. Now, what is the definition of prayer? Prayer is an action to invoke the grace, anugraha of Ishvara. Prayer is a way of invoking the grace of Ishvara. And it is intelligent. It is an intelligent action. So, prayer is also one type of action which supplements our other normal regular actions. And this prayer, which is also a type of action, is of three varieties. One is called kaika, physical, other is vachika, oral, third is manasa, mental. So, we can do three types of prayer. So, doing puja is also a prayer. Doing a particular ritual is also a prayer. Nowadays, because of this modern way of thinking, people think only sitting with closed eye, that alone is prayer. That is not so. That also may be prayer. But prayer involves all these three. It can be physical, oral or mental. Oral prayer means chanting the names of the Lord, doing the Parayanam, invoking the grace of Ishvara, that also is prayer called Vachika Prarthana. Prayer in Sanskrit called Prarthana. So, Kaika Prarthana, Puja etc., Vachika Prarthana and then Manasa Prarthana in the form of Upasana, meditation upon the Lord, invoking the grace, mental japa, that also is a prarthana. So, there are three forms of these prayers. And these prayers, how does it help? What is its significance? That is the next point we will discuss. First of all, as we saw earlier, Prayers help me to take care of hidden variables, invisible obstacles, which I might not have seen. Therefore, we may not even know that how prayers have worked, because prayers take care of hidden variables. So, we might not have seen, but it must have cleared some obstacles because of which our action was successful. So, first thing is prayers take care of hidden variables, hidden factors, hidden obstacles. Second thing is prayer is an intelligent way of living. Life of prayers is a intelli an intelligent way of living because with reference to hidden variables, we are helpless. We can plan only known factors. What I know of, I can plan. It can rain, let me take umbrella. There may be, there may be some thorns, let me wear chappal. So, I can take care of known factors by my action, by some resources. But how will I handle these unknown factors? I am helpless with regard to them. And when you are helpless, it is an intelligent way of life to ask for help. Which is Swamiji used to say very nicely, when you are helpless, please ask for help. That is intelligent way of living. So, by prayers, we are asking for help. Because in that area, 
we do not have any access. So, we are taking help. So, it is an intelligent way of living. That is second significance. Third is, when you are offering prayer, your sense of helplessness is reduced and therefore, the stress created by challenges will be reduced. You feel more relaxed or at least less stressed when you are offering prayer. Because helpless situation is that in which we are not able to act. When you are able to act in the form of prayer, you are doing something about the situation. And when you are doing something about the situation, your sense of helplessness will be reduced, your stress will be reduced. Therefore, prayerful life, the life full of prayer is a stress-free life. Another thing is, when this prayer is done together, if there is a habit of doing prayers in a family, all family members sit together every evening and they pray together, they will have more harmony among them, themselves. They say, those who pray together, they stay together. So, praying together brings this sense of unity, brings this feeling of harmony. And therefore, also prayer is very, very useful. And prayer helps to invoke a devotee in me. And once the devotion is developed in my heart, then, then in general, I will be more accommodative, more accepting to different situations. My resistance to situation will be reduced. And one more thing, the prayer does is, prayer leads me to prayerfulness. There is a difference between prayer and prayerfulness. Prayer is an act, is an action, whereas prayerfulness is an attitude. What is the meaning of prayerfulness? It is an attitude of appreciating the fact that everything is given to me. My family is given to me, job is given to me, resources are given to me, capacity to talk, cap capacity to see, everything is given to me. And who is the giver? Giver is the Lord. And the giver is not separate from the given and therefore more and more I appreciate the presence of Ishwara in every situation and therefore my life become prayerful life. There is attitude of prayerfulness. I am never away from Ishwara. In every situation I appreciate the presence of Ishwara by seeing everything as manifestation of Ishvara. Because everything is in order and that order is Ishvara, that Niyati is Ishvara and therefore, I can appreciate the presence of Ishvara. And that starts with what? This act of prayer. So, prayer will lead me to prayerfulness. And therefore, prayer is very important. In fact, prayer is a part of every religion. Every religion will have prayer. And only thing some people have got fear of not doing prayer. That also is because of one misconception. And that is, if we don't offer prayers, Bhagavan will be angry with me. That is a wrong thinking. You get rid of this thinking that Bhagavan will be angry if I don't offer prayers. That is never, never so. It is never like that. 
Bhagwan is not like uh, your uncle that if you don't flatter him, he will be angry. So, if you offer prayer, you receive the grace. If you don't offer prayer, you may not receive the grace which is earned by prayers, but Bhagwan will never be angry with you. So, never have any fear that today I did not do my Vishnu Sahasranama, today I did not do puja, therefore Bhagwan will be angry. That is not correct. Because of this type of thinking, many atheists will ridicule. See, because of religion you are frightened. I don't believe in God, so I am carefree. I am fearless. What religion has given to you? Only fear. So at least we get rid of this wrong thinking that Bhagavan will be angry with us if we don't pray. It is never so. We need not fear God. We love God. Many times people say he is a God-fearing man. Let us not use such expression. We need not be God-fearing people. Let us be God-loving people. We love God. We need not be afraid of God. No. And thus, prayer is a very important way to get connected to Ishwara, invoking the grace of Ishwara. And we get so much connected through prayer that slowly we become non-separate, we appreciate ourselves to be non-separate from Ishwara, being part of Ishwara, being Vyashti, individual, I am not separate from Samashti total and thus I appreciate my inherent connection with Ishwara and that is with this prayer. Regarding prayer, okay, I, one or two minutes I will take more. Regarding prayer, many people have this question. That Swamiji, I prayed, prayed, prayed and still my prayers were not answered. So I stopped believing in prayers. What do you have to say? I say that prayer works, prayer is an action. And action gives its result in keeping with certain laws. So prayer also operates based on certain laws. So, if the obstacle was very big in getting certain result and my prayer could not produce that much counter effect and therefore, I did not get success in that particular action. But this does not mean prayer is not effective. Like certain medicine did not work for certain people, does not mean that medicine itself is useless. Some people have got different constitution, therefore it doesn't work. But it doesn't mean medicine is useless. So similarly, prayers, even though sometimes do not work, but doesn't mean that they are ineffective. Prayer is definitely effective because it is given by the Shastra, which is revealed by the Lord. And prayer works is the experience of so many Mahatmas. And in our own life, we can see, that when we offer prayer, we feel very good and we do get desired result. And therefore, let us pray to Bhagavan that may we have prayerful mind in every situation appreciating the grace of Ishvara. The final result of prayer is that you don't require to pray afterwards. You have so much identified with Bhagavan's wish that you are seeing His grace in all situations. Therefore, you don't require to pray and that is the culmination of prayer. So, we pray to Bhagavan that may we have that life where we attain the culmination of prayers. With this, I conclude Om Tat Sid. I hope I have not taken more time. Ah, okay, good. All right. If anybody has any question, if they want to ask, I can answer. Thank you very much, Swamiji. Your presentation was just like a research article on prayer. Ah. <laughs> starting, starting from the introduction. 
this release, this conception, and methods of prayers, and finally the result of prayer. It was mm. a scientific seminar. Mm. Thank you very much on the behalf of Vivekananda Dinam and all the dignitary audience and Vyas uh, Yoga Center. I would like I would extend my thanks to you. And finally, official th for official thanks, I would ask uh, uh, our dear Manoj Bhaiya. Thank you so much, Swamiji, uh, for accepting our request to uh, give the knowledge about different topics. It was a very important topic because we always start our all the sessions with prayer. The prayer is a part of our life. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to understand that and you remove our all misconception about the prayer. Very, very systematic way and very clear way you have uh, and uh, yes definitely we always have so much of unseen forces sometimes we are not aware about it and not all that so give us a strength Swamiji that we feel and um, with prayer and that we become more confident to do our things uh, a bit positive mindset you know, that positive mindset, uh, you are rightly said, you know, not only remove the unseen forces, but also we become more confident to do our work. We are not affected by the results because we are happy what we are doing and uh, we have started, the starting uh, has become very good. So, really, really amazing session. I always remember you, uh, you, you have given us so many wonderful knowledge during our uh, MSc in yoga in so it will be really very grateful that you are giving uh, your valuable time and and we request you Swamiji at least once in a month yeah we'll see and us with some other uh, uh, Manoj I have, rece I have received one question Manoj I have received one question uh, I have received one question can I answer that okay. Huh? Yeah, asking something. Ah, shall I answer that question? Huh? Yeah. 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 So, thank you, Swamiji. Ego is another strong factor. Overconfidence also holds people from going ahead with prayer. For me, it is a matter of discipline and showing gratitude to nature of nature for what I have, with no vested interest. Yeah, that's a good attitude. In fact, prayer can be, I forgot to mention, prayer can be an expression of gratitude as well. It need not be in the form of asking for something. It can be in the form of expression of gratitude. And ego becomes a factor because we have not seen the fallacy of ego. Ego will go when you understand that ego has no basis to be there. That is why I, I talked about that appreciation that everything is given to me. For what I can have ego? This body is given to me, the capacity to think is given to me, capacity to perceive is given to me, infrastructure is given to me. So everything is given to me and therefore really speaking I cannot claim any soul authorship on anything and therefore I see the fallacy of ego and there is only expression of gratitude, which also is another form of prayer. And I appreciate that you do prayer as an expression of gratitude without any vested interest is a very good attitude. But one thing you can uh, keep in mind that nothing wrong in asking for some help from Ishvara. It is not against any law. It is not bypassing the law. In fact, it is very much within the, the fold of, within the, the rain, within the, what is called, field of law, within the, <coughs> what is called, uh, domain of law. And therefore, nothing wrong in asking for favor. But when we outgrow the need for receiving any favor, then our life is totally harmonized with the will of Ishwara 
Therefore, we don't have to ask. Our prayer will be only the prayer of gratitude. I hope your question is answered. So, I appreciate your thinking. Om Bhavantu Sukhinaha